Hey, Shalom Israel. We back at it again with another 15 minutes with the captains. I'm Captain Tazan Wanda to my right. Officer Kim Uel. Hey, listen, we're dealing with the topic today. It's entitled, Do You Have the Holy Spirit? We're going to deal with three different categories. We're going to deal with what is the Holy Spirit, what, who gives the Holy Spirit, and how to receive the Holy Spirit, all right? We're going to get into it in detail pertaining to do you have the Holy Spirit according to thus saith the Bible? Now, listen, there's two different categories of the Holy Spirit. You're dealing with the spiritual gift of what the Holy Spirit is. And on top of that, the actual word of God or wisdom of the scriptures. That is the Holy Spirit. Today, what we're going to deal with primarily is the word of God being the Holy Spirit. Let's get that real quick in the book of James, chapter 5. And read verse 14. We're going to be quick. Come on. The book of James, chapter 5 and verse 14. Right. Is any sick among you? Mm -hmm. Let him call for the elders of the church. So remember in the history, when Christ and the disciples, they walked the scene, they went about healing the people of their infirmities, of their sicknesses, of the palsy. Um, Christ brought some from the dead, all right? Those were that, that was the result of the actual spiritual, physical gift that the disciples in Christ had. And Paul had. They received that through what? Keeping of the commandments and the faith of Christ. Read it again from the top. Come on. Is there is any sick among you? So is there any sick among you? Come on. Let him call for the elders of the church. Let him call for the elders of the church. Why? Listen, we got to understand that there will be a transition from that spiritual healing, that spiritual power being in the physical to what? A more elaborate method of being healed of in the body. Read on. Come on. And let them pray over him. And do what? And let them pray over him. So those that were sick, now the elders of the church, the leaders, would pray over those that were sick in the body. Read on, come on. Anointing him. Doing what? Anointing him. How? With oil. From that, let's get, read on, read on. I'm in sorry. the name of the Lord. It says, anointing him and praying over those individuals that are sick. Anointing them with oil and praying over them by the elders, okay? Give me 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 22. 1 Timothy 5 and 22. So there would be a righteous transition of the, the healing of the Holy Ghost from a physical standpoint to the spiritual, which is God's word. Read that real quick. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 22. Mm -hmm. Lay hands suddenly on no man. Read that again. Lay hands suddenly on no man. Because they would lay their hands on individuals to heal them. The Bible says what now? Read. Lay hands suddenly on no man, uh -huh. neither be partaker of other men's sins. Read on. Keep thyself pure. It says keep thyself pure. Read, come on. Drink no longer water, mm -hmm. but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake, and, off and thine Often infirmities. It says, for your often infirmities, meaning your weaknesses, the weaknesses of being sick, okay? Those things that you would need that spiritual healing from. You would be healed from it with what? It says right here, drink but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmities because the wine would be used, the alcohol would be used for different municipal purposes, all right? Like medicines, etc. all right? So from that the spiritual gift of the word, the, the Apostle Paul and Timothy, they understood that there would be a fading away of that actual physical spiritual gift. All right. So from that, let's deal with the first topic at hand. What is the spirit, the Holy Spirit? Give me that real quick in the book of Romans chapter 7, verse 12. Romans 7 and 12. We're going to deal with what is the Holy Spirit? What is holy? Read that real quick. The book of Romans, chapter 7 and verse 12. Right. Wherefore, the law is holy. The law is what? Is holy. Read on, come on. And the commandment holy. And the what? And the commandment holy. Okay. And just and good. Give me John chapter 6, verse 30, uh, verse 63. So now we're dealing with a part of the Holy Spirit. What we understand now, according to the scriptures, is what is holy is God's laws and his commandments. Hmm. Okay, so let's deal with what the Spirit is. Read that. Come on. John chapter 6, verse 63. Read. It is the Spirit that quickens. It is what? 
The spirit that quickeneth. The spirit does something for you. It makes you quick with your spirit that you have. What does that word quickeneth mean? means make alive. We're going to make it clear. Come on, come on. The flesh profiteth nothing. Right, read. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So the Holy Spirit is the commandments, the laws of God. That's what is holy. And the spirit is God's word, Christ's word. So the Holy Spirit, in a nutshell, listen, is the commandments of God, which is the word of God. Now, come on, give me Proverbs chapter 7, verse 1 real quick. Proverbs 7 and 1. What is the Holy Spirit? It's not that, oh, shamala lama. Blue, 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 bop. Boop, bop, damn. It's not that. That ain't the Holy Spirit. Exactly. <laughs> it ain't all of that. And then they got to put the sheet over you when you're on the ground. No, 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 no. It ain't the show. The Holy Spirit is God's word. Read that verse for me real quick, Proverbs. The book of Proverbs, chapter 7, verse 1. Right. My son, keep my words. Keep the what? Keep my words. Okay, come on. And lay up my commandments with thee. Read. Keep my commandments and live. Remember it said early, it says, uh, go back to that in John real quick, real briefly. It says, in Proverbs 7 and 1, it says, my son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live. Read that verse. Come on. John chapter 6, verse 63. Mm -hmm. It is the spirit that quickeneth. Uh -huh. The flesh profiteth nothing. The flesh profiteth nothing. Read on. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are light. And the words, what would you hear? God's commandments. God's commandments, the word of God will bring you life. When you keep the commandments and live in Christ, you have the Holy Spirit. Real quick, give me a uh, proverb first. Peter's chapter 3, verse 18. It's going to bring it home right here. 1 Peter 3 and 18. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 3 and verse 18. Right. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, mm -hmm. the just for the unjust, right. that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. So the Spirit of God makes your dead soul in sin alive. It's the word of God. So what is the Holy Spirit? Thus saith the scriptures is God's uh, commandments and the faith of Christ. That's what his Holy Spirit is. It's the commandments of God. Now from that, let's go to the second one. Let's go to who gives the Holy Spirit. Give me wisdom of Solomon chapter 9, read verse 13. Who gives the Holy Spirit? We dealt with what is the Holy Spirit, which is God's word, keeping other commandments. Now we're going to deal with who gives that Holy Spirit? The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9 and verse 13. Mm -hmm. For what man is he that can know the counsel of God? Who knows God's mind or his counsel? Who knows that? Read on, come on. Or who can think what the will of the Lord is? Jump to verse 17. Verse 17. And thy counsel. This is God's counsel right here. We're going to get some understanding on God's counsel or who gives the Holy Spirit. Read on, come on. Who hath known. Uh-huh. Except thou give wisdom. The only way you're going to know and understand God's counsel, brothers and sisters, is if you have the wisdom of the Bible. What is the wisdom? Come on. And send thy Holy Spirit from above. <laughs> That's plain and simple. God's wisdom, hold this, go to Psalms 111 verse 10. That makes it plain and simple what God's wisdom and how he sends it down. Okay. Which is what? His keeping of the commandments. When you keep God's commandments, you have wisdom. The book of Psalms, chapter 111 and verse 10. Read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Uh huh. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. So when you keep God's commandments and do them, guess what happens? You have the wisdom. Go back to that in Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 17. Mm-hmm. And thy counsel, who hath known, except thou give wisdom, and send thy Holy Spirit. So when you have the commandments of God, you have the wisdom of God, which is the Holy Spirit. And where does it come from? Read that part again. From above. God gives it to you. From that, let's get John chapter uh, 14, verse 15. We're going to read down to 17. So this should be plain at this point. God's Spirit, his Holy Spirit. And as well as who gives it comes from God when you keep his commandments. 
the book of St. John, chapter 14 and verse 15. Right. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. And I will pray the Father that he shall give you another comforter. There we go again. If you keep God's commandments, the Christ, Christ said he's going to pray to the Father to give you another comforter. Read on. That he may abide with you forever. Right, because this word is eternal. It'll abide with you forever when you keep it. Read, come on. Even the spirit of truth. Even the spirit of truth. Remember, the spirit is God's word. The spirit is Christ's word. John chapter 6, verse 63. It says, in truth, read on, come on. Whom the world cannot receive. From that, it says, even the spirit of truth that the Father will send, right, if you keep his commandments. Let's see what the spirit of truth is. It's the word, what is the truth? Psalms 119, verse 151. It says, the Father, if you keep God's commandments, the Father will send you the spirit of truth. Mm -hmm. His word, what is the truth? Let's get it. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 151. Right. Thou art near, O Lord, and all thy commandments are true. How is God near? When you keep his commandments, which is the truth. That's how he's near unto you. That's how he'll abode with you forever, like it said back there in John. Go back to that in John. Chapter 14, what was that? Verse 16? Uh, 17. Right. The book of St. John, chapter 14 and verse 17. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world... Read verse 16. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comfort, right. that he may abide with you forever. So how shall he abide with you forever? By keeping other commandments, which is the spirit of truth. Remember what we read beforehand in Psalms chapter 119, verse 151. It says, you are nigh unto me, Lord, and all thy commandments is the truth. Now, last but not least, we're going to deal with the last topic, which is how to receive the Holy Spirit slash not resist it. Let's get it real quick in the book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 51. Acts 7, 51. So what we're going over are different examples of in the scriptures exactly what is the Holy Spirit, what is the Holy Ghost? How to pinpoint exactly what it is so that you yourself can easily receive that spirit, all right? It's as plain as you read in the Bible, applying what's in the scriptures and doing them yourselves. You receive the Holy Ghost. Read on. The book of Acts, chapter 7 and verse 51. Right. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. How can you resist the Holy Ghost if it's just something that can just walk in and out of you, okay? What is this Holy Ghost that these brothers and these sisters that have a stiff neck and uncircumcised heart and ears, what, what is it that they're resisting? Read on, come on. As your fathers did, so do ye. Hmm. So you resist the Holy Ghost like your fathers did in time past. Let's see what it's going into. Come on. Which of the prophets... Have not your fathers persecuted, mm -hmm. and they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, Read. of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. That's a very pivotal point right there that Paul, that, that's mentioned right here by Stephen. All right? It's saying, you all that resist the Holy Ghost, you are the same ones that murdered the prophets, that betrayed the prophets. Keep reading on pertaining on to what the Holy Ghost is. Read on. Come Verse on. 53. Come on. Who have received the law. The what? The law. The what? The law. That's plain in black and white right there. It says what they've resisted and what, whom they, what they have received was the what? Read. Who have received the law. They received the laws of God. That's what they resisted. Read on. By the disposition of angels. By the disposition of the leaders, they resisted the laws of God, which entail is exactly what the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is. That's what they resisted. So how you receive it is you learn God's commandments. You keep God's commandments. You receive the Holy Spirit from that. Let's get Psalm. I mean, Isaiah chapter 63, verse 10. Isaiah 63, read verse 10. The book of Isaiah, chapter 63, and verse 10. Read. But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. How did they rebel? Because they did not receive that Holy Spirit of God. 
And what did they rebel against? The Holy Spirit. All right. They didn't receive the word, which is the commandments, and they rebelled against the Holy Spirit, which is the laws of God. Read on. Come on. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy. So when you rebel against God's commandments, when you resist the spirit, guess what? The Lord will turn his face against you. Read on. Come on. And he fought against them. And he fought against them. He became our enemy instead of one to help and aid us in a time of distress. All right. So when you resist the commandments, when you resist the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the Lord is against you. Read on real quick. Let's get uh, Isaiah chapter eight and read verse 16. Isaiah eight and 16. So now what we're going to glean more into now, we read a part about how what happens when you resist the Holy Spirit. Now, how do you ultimately receive it? Read that verse. Come on. The book of Isaiah. Chapter 8 and verse 16. Right. Bind up the testimony. Do what? Bind up the testimony. Read. Seal the law among my disciples. Seal the laws among the disciples, the students of God. Now, with that sealing real quick, I'm going to bring it home right now. Give me the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13. Ephesians 1 verse 13. It says, seal the law among my disciples. When you have the law sealed amongst the disciples, they've received something that they did not resist. What did they receive? Read that verse. Come on. The book of Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13. Read. And whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, mm -hmm. the gospel. Listen, remember what we talked about. The word of truth is God's commandments. That's what you receive, which is the spirit. Read on. Come on. The gospel of your salvation. And that's how you receive salvation to get the kingdom of heaven. Read. Come on. In whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed. When you believe God's words, you were sealed with the laws of God. And what did you receive? Read. With that Holy Spirit. What? With that Holy Spirit. So when the words of God were sealed in your spirit to keep them and do his commandments, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit. Read on. Come on. Of promise. Of promise. And with that, hey, listen, brothers and sisters, we're going to say shalom. I hope y'all were edified. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth